Hi, everybody. This is the um, Central Business Architecture Committee uh, for the city of Northampton. It's March 7th, 2024. Um, <clears throat> and today we only have one agenda item, but before we get started with that, is there anyone here who is not with a uh, applicant that has any public comment to make? Okay. Raised no, since no one is um, coming forward, then we'll move forward with uh, the applicant, which is the review of a propane tank storage by C. C. Z. Sorry about the pronunciation at 71 Pleasant Street, Northampton, map ID 32C349. Um, if you're the applicant, if you could come forward and state your name and relationship to the project and just present um, to the committee what you're proposing to do. Uh, um, okay, you can unmute, right. Hello, uh, can you hear me, Carolyn? Yes. Yes, okay. we can hear All you. Right. Mike? All right, great. Yes. Um, so um, I'm here. I'm, just, I'm Mike George from George Propane. I'm here. I think CC and Shin are, I believe they're on the call with us. Um, and what we're doing is we're proposing to put in four 120 gallon propane tanks um, for uh, CC and Shin at their location. I don't have the actual street address. It was in 71 Pleasant, I believe. And I can put that up on the screen if anybody needs to see that. Um, let me just find the file here. Um, location. So that's the existing building and the side where that would be located. Um, I can also find the tanks would be in the back. Is that correct, Mike? I just um, need to find that. Yeah, the tanks are, as you're looking down the alley, the tanks are in the, if you're facing the building on the left side, down the alley, all the way to the back. <clears throat> and I, I think there was a site plan showing that. Um, do you have that, Carolyn? Yep. Uh, yeah, and, so and I think while we're waiting two. for that that yep. image, maybe, maybe Mike, you could tell us um, you're putting the four 100 gallon propane tanks up and a uh, chain link fence with vinyl slats. Mm -hmm. That and is it a four or six foot high fence? Um, yeah, we're proposing. I think the tanks themselves are about 52 inches tall so the fence would be approximately that same height and it can be um you know it can be whatever cc and shin want but we we propose putting just like a black powder coat chain link fence with black slats and the fence would be tall enough to hide the propane tank so you couldn't actually see them yep yeah we'd want to put them put the fence about the same height as the tanks right not much higher you still need to reach, you know, get over and look at them or reach out. I mean, there would be a gate, but um, right, you want to put them up about the same height as the tanks. <clears throat> so the enclosure is about three feet wide and 10 feet long. Yep. And so what you would be seeing from Pleasant Street is approximately a, a three foot wide fence that is about six feet tall. And yep, it would be correct. black. Yes. Actually, it would probably come out probably around, it would come out further than three feet. It would, the tank dimension is about three. It would probably come out maybe 
four to four and a half feet to leave room in there to get, so we'd have to have a gate to go in and, and uh, fill the tanks. Um, does the, I believe it, in terms of the central business, um, architecture guidelines, we would be looking at the, uh, guideline 13 regarding mechanical equipment. Is that correct, Carolyn? Yeah. I mean, the interesting that I don't think the guidelines ever anticipated this type <laughs> of scenario, certainly. Um, they were written well before the gas moratorium. Um, and so I think it's sort of an interpretation, um, yes, of the, of the guidelines. So it, it is sort of comparable to an exterior mechanical, mechanical equipment. Yeah. And so that guideline talks about, um, it says mechanical features should not be installed in ways which irreversibly damage historic features or materials. Um, rooftop mechanical equipment should not be visible from street views. Um, so I, I guess the question for the committee is the fencing sufficient to um, shield the view of equipment. So I think it's open to the committee for feedback or comments. Um, I did a little research. This is Melissa Fridlow. Uh, I did a little research online and now I'm kind of second guessing my notes, but from what I understand, you know, it's within the 500, um, 500 liquid pounds or whatever, whatever the specifications is. It has to be five feet away from a window, which it is, and 10 feet from a source of ignition. Um, but then I have another note and it says if it's less than 500, which it is, it's about 480 um, or 480 gallons, that's what it is. It has to be 10 feet from the building. Does anybody know if that's true? And if it has to be 10 feet, then we look at it differently, I guess. I think that that's yeah, a the building single, code. Yeah, yeah the ahead. single 100s can be up against the building. If it was a, a single container with that kind of volume over 120, then it has to be uh, 10 feet. But the individual oh, okay. 120s that are manifold together can be right up against Okay, thank you. Do we have any requirements for screening fences? Are there any um, specific material standards or anything like that? I'm, I'm not aware of any. Um, so I'm just curious where a chain link fence would fall. I mean, I can say, I think typically the, um, you know, the, there's overall general um, guidelines about using natural materials. Or, um, uh, and that's um, particularly on facades. Um, I think that um, given the location, I think that the committee has the ability to look at the location relative to the street and then how visible that might be um, and what impact that might be on the, might have on the sidewalk. And it's, um, as the site plan shows, it's 61 feet back from that sidewalk and right up against the building. So, you know, I think um, I think in a lot of contexts, chain link with vinyl slats would not be appropriate in most districts in the city, even in residential districts. Um, but you all can sort of look at that, look at the setting, look at um, you know, the constraints already that um, both the moratorium are presenting and also the site at this building, at the site at, at this location, as well as the fact that it it's not something um, would be our interpretation. It's not something that's going to have a, 
um, deleterious effect to the building itself because it's, you know, it's something that could be removed easily without having an, an impact. I, uh, I, for one, have no concerns about this. I think it's so far away from the street. It's like uh, it's likely that cars are going to be parked in front of it, which would make it even less visible. I I really think this is a reasonable solution to the problem that the applicant faces, and um, I'm not. I have no concerns. Great. Um, I I would agree um, with Joe's comments. So um, I wonder if there's if anyone would like to make a motion to. Um, approve uh, I guess with confirmation that the the height of the fence will um, completely cover the tanks um can you so first I'll, I'll make sure there isn't any public comment oh, yeah. and then any close the hearing <laughs> it's been a while since we've done that. I know. <laughs> is there any further comment from the public or uh, from Michael George or the applicant? I don't see yeah, Carolyn, one, one, one thing I forgot to mention also, there will be um, bollards, you know, crash protection around the fence also. Six inch filled concrete posts. And they'll be painted either black or they'll have the yellow sleeves on them. So the committee might want to consider whether the black might blend in with the fence and the black slats better than old yellow. Yes, I, I think they should be black, would be my opinion. Agreed. Are we that's, e that's, that's easy enough, we just paint them black. Um, Michael's voice is breaking up on my tablet. Are, are we talking about like bollards in front of the thing to prevent a car or truck from crashing into it? Okay, yeah, I would, black would be good, yes, I would agree. Any further comment before we close the public portion? Okay, so we'll close the public portion uh, for comment and uh, ask the board if there's anyone who'd like to make a motion. Well, I'll be happy to make a motion. I will make a motion that we approve this project is subject to the fence being high enough to cover the um, uh, propane tanks and that the protected bollards be black. There's a second. I'll second that. Thanks, Emily. And uh, all in favor, do we have to do roll call by name? Yes, so I can do that. Um, uh, Joe? I vote yes. Uh, Melissa? I vote yes. Emily? Yes. And Alan? Yes. In favor? So, so thank you, uh, Michael, and, and is it Cece? All right, thanks for having us. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Looking forward to the coffee shop. Um, do we have any other further business with this committee? I, I, I know like to, Joe had a comment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to say something. I, you know, it's been a long time since we've met, and the reason for that is because the um, boundaries of the district that we are in charge of has uh, contracted a great deal. And as far as I can tell, we have one really important project that's going to come up, namely whatever happens to replace the Registry of Deeds business uh, building. And um, this is, I just think it's something that this is something that we should think about that after that project is done and we've had our say about it. And I, I think it's so important that this committee should have a say about it. But after that's done, I think um, we should re make a recommendation to the city council that we be disbanded and that our responsibilities be given over to the um, historical commission to, to do in a way that is similar to the registry. 
by the things that are going to cover us other than the Joe, you, you you disappeared and you were breaking up. It's like these registry few registry property are going to be so far between that it will be difficult to maintain that can be difficult to get people that are interested in serving on it. And um, we just won't have enough to, to do to be worthwhile. So it's something I think that should be we should be thinking about once the um, registry building happens and you know that could be given the pace at which uh, that's happening it could be many years yet but uh, i just I, I i think we should all think about that that's all i don't have a motion or anything i just wanted to bring it here. i mean i could give you some updates and then throw out some um, other things to think about. Um, first of all, um, I'm excited to say that I have set a date of March 13th to issue the RFP for the registry building. So we finally got back our analysis. Um, um, the the, the holdup was we wanted to do one more round of ground testing to see the extents of the contamination on the site to eliminate, you know, um, concern and risk for the on the behalf of the buyer. Um, we found out that the, the extents don't go beyond the property boundaries. There are some contaminants on the A to Z property, but those are not new releases. Those are have probably been there for decades and the A to Z has an AUL on it. So it may very well be associated with that AUL. So um, they, there was the delay in, in that process. The drillers actually came in early December and the drill broke. And so they wanted to come back in December, but then A to Z asked us, please, not during the Christmas season. <laughs> so um, we said, absolutely, we don't want to mess up anybody's <laughs> Christmas shopping or revenues that are generated during the holiday season. So they um, went on hold till January, finally finished up the testing with a new drill rig <laughs> that didn't, that wasn't operating. Um, and so we're gonna issue that next week. There'll be a three month window. Um, initially we were thinking sort of a long window for permitting or acquisition closing on the deal, but we've shortened that window, especially now that we, the, we've sort of really narrowed that risk down, I think enough that there shouldn't be a lot of due diligence that folks would need to do about the site. Um, so we're targeting September as a potential close date um, for that property. So, um, you know, it might be sooner than later <laughs> that an application comes, you know, comes forward. I mean, it's still going to take months for an applicant to to pull together plans and, and so forth. But um, I'm hopeful that we can really start to see some buzz and energy around that property. Um, and then, um, you know, for a while on this department side, city side, we've been thinking about ways to um, consolidate some boards where it makes sense. Um, so maybe, and that is really more about the fact that it's so hard to find people to serve and, um, and there's a lot of, it's time commitment, it's public pressure. Um, there are all sorts of reasons why, um, it's been hard to fill slots in across all the boards and committees. So, um, that's certainly, um, worth pursuing, you know, we haven't, necessarily thought one committee over the other. Obviously, the um, the other thing we could think about is um, putting slots for people on the planning board that come as sort of formally representing, let's say, Central Business Architecture Committee, make sure that there are architects or design slots on the planning board if that's the direction to go. And then, so anyway, I just put that on the table too, obviously. Um, no um, decision or vote <laughs> would be taken tonight or in the near future, but just something else to think about. 
Um, can I, I'm hoping um, that your RFP, that the first requirement will be that the old registry building be demolished. And I'm hoping that um, the second thing is that anything that replaces it is gonna to have to be at least three stories high. Part B, I think part A, your first <laughs> recommendation, it's not a mandate, but it requires that the building be all electric. Um, and uh, frankly, I don't see how you could really fully utilize that site without, I mean, Elon could probably <laughs> um, put her, her two cents in about that as well, and, and Emily and all of you guys, actually. But it seems like it would be kind of hard to maximize that site with that box may, remaining there. Um, so um, we assume that the building is coming down and given that, but also we are, um, we do have a three-story stipulation there and then also incentives in the scoring to go taller. So. All right, well, I would, I would come right out and say it should be demolished if I were you. I don't think I don't think you should do that. I think you should leave it up to the developer to determine what's the most um, appropriate way to develop a site. There's always ways to use existing buildings. It doesn't you can punch a lot of openings into a building and make it attractive. Again, you can build over existing buildings. There is some carbon savings um, when you leave an existing building in place and renovate it. So just, I wouldn't dictate um, that it has to come down. I would let them prove out why it should stay or not. Let let the design team figure it out. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna choose someone based on what they're proposing, right? Um. So it won't be full design. It'll be yes, what the what they're proposing and meeting those. Um, you know, targets, um, yeah. target criteria. Yeah. So let the design team determine what is the most energy efficient, carbon neutral way to develop the site. It is the most hideous piece of architecture in the city, I think, and it needs not to look like that anymore. Yeah, you could do yeah, a lot to that building to make it look better. <laughs> So keep an eye out, tell everyone you know to look for this bid that's gonna be posted on the city's website on Wednesday. Is, um, it, is it a fixed price or is it they're making an offer, the developer's making an offer on the site? It's um, a fixed price, but the, the total um, value consideration is gonna be across 10 years. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's a lump sum at the front end, and then we'll evaluate what the return over 10 years is. And it, you said it's March next week? It's next week? 13th is my target date. Okay. We'll let folks know. It's exciting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It is exciting. Yeah. Um, well, I'd be sorry to see this committee go, but I understand what you're saying, Joe. It's uh, were you, and you you broke up. Were you saying the historic commission should take it on? Well, I, I'm, you know, I could, I, I, I'm not sure. I, the planning board might be a better choice. I'm not sure, but uh, I just it's something it should be on our radar because I don't think that in the long run, given what we have purview over, that there's enough here to make it worthwhile to have a separate committee. Yeah. So. And, and Carolyn, we went through a whole bunch of editing of the guidelines. Did that get formalized? Uh, no, <laughs> not yet. It's still in the box. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I mean, it was formalized in one sense, in that a lot of it got it is um, mirrored in the new, you know, design um, form-based code. 
Um, but it, which is why I also put it on the back burner because I knew we had that as as cover. Um, so, but it's a good point. Should probably have those updated soon. Well, I, I guess to Joe's point, if the committee doesn't exist anymore, do those guidelines need to exist or, or are they integrated into the form-based code, like you said, just to specific, the specific central business area rather than having, I mean, I'm, I'm all about having less books and guidelines to look at one central location is always better for designers mm -hmm. yeah a little more clarity about what the guidelines are for the specific location yeah so, that's my two cents it's nice to see you Thank all you. sorry we're, we're not in person i know <laughs> yeah thanks for coming and i know this is an odd time but um you know, I wanted to make sure we got this project along. It's, it's too bad that we have to deal with, um, you know, there are other ramifications of the gas moratorium that are affecting people. So. I'm sure that that building had gas, right? But it's been empty for two years. Is that the issue? Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, All right. It, it, Northampton's not the only town that's dealing with it. Yeah. Um, do we have a motion to close the meeting? I make a motion that we adjourn. Okay. A second. I second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 aye.